Welcome, I'm from the Xiaomi Redmi 5 Plus and today I'll show you how to unlock your bootloader on this device. Now for this we'll need a couple different things, obviously we'll need a computer and additionally we'll also need some kind of cable, internet connection and uh, well, the files that are in the description as well. So let's get started. Um, oh, actually one last thing that we'll need, a uh, SIM card that hasn't been used to actually register for uh, the me account. Now the reason why we will need that is because we need to create an account using that SIM card, assuming you haven't created one uh, using the phone number. Because there's two ways of creating an account. We can either use an email address, which you will, will need to provide a phone number throughout the process anyway, or you can make it using a phone number as a basically a login. So basically we need the second option, the one with a phone number, without actually providing it later on. Uh, if you have it the other way that you have it basically a email login and the number has been already used for the me account anyway uh, then that sim card will not work so um let's jump straight to it so uh right here you can see the phone on the screen although oof, that's kind of rough right now uh, but still this will work and the animation or latency i should say is not the greatest but it will still show you what you need to see. So anyway, um, apart from that, we will need basically everything that is right here. So we need the Xiaomi USB drivers, mini ADB and fastboot drivers, and then Xiaomi bootloader unlock software. Now, let me see if this has been fixed because when I tried it the first time, it uh, didn't download it. Yep, so it's not downloading right now. Hopefully this will be fixed uh, by the time this video is published. Um, so you will need to download this. I fortunately do have this already installed, so I don't need to install anything extra here. I also have this installed as well, and uh, I have it downloaded. Well, this is downloaded for me. Uh, now I'll touch upon only this part right here, the mini ADB and fastboot drivers, because when you actually download them and extract them, let me quickly find it. Uh, it's right here. You will have three different files that you need to install, uh, but what I'm getting at is uh, this one specifically. So when you double click on it to actually install it, it will not give you a typical installation, it will give you this kind of like dialog box. So from here, as you can see, it asks you a question, do you want to install ADB and Fastboot? Uh, so what you need to do is press Y on your keyboard, which for some reason it just decided to not work here. Let me try to fix this up. Ah, there we go. So press Y and enter, then again install ADB system wide. Now that's completely up to you if you wanted to install for all users or just you. Uh, then install ADB and fastboot. Okay, so it's installing, there we go, four files copied. Uh, do you want to install dri device drivers? Sure. And from here select next, finish, there we go. So this is done installing and now you're left also with the ADB or Android ADB fastboot and universal ADB drivers. Now this will install just typically uh, with, by pressing next and install. Uh, this in addition, almost the same as this above, just next, next, install. Uh, but when it's installing, it will give you a pop-up uh, with the drivers. Uh, so basically Windows has like this uh, weird driver installation sometimes where it just opens up a window uh, during installation and you need to basically click to install. There's two options to basically not install it and then to install it. So make sure you pick the one to install, otherwise this won't work. And once you have this installed, uh, you're basically good to go. I'm gonna now back out and just have this open and ready to go. Yeah, let's minimize this. So what we need to do now on our device is either create an account, uh, if you haven't created one already, uh, or simply log in with it. Now, I am already logged in, but basically what you would do is you would go all the way down. Let me make this big um, full screen. Uh, the quality improves when it's full screen for some reason. So anyway, from here, you would just select the me account, as you can see right here, and you'd log in. Now I am already logged in, as you can see, uh, phone number right here. So my account is phone number based, so this will work for me. And uh, yeah, so, on the me account that's basically all uh, like i said if you don't have an account you can create it uh, just make sure that the phone number hasn't been used because then you won't be able to basically create an account using phone number uh, now anyway let's go back and from here we also need to navigate to uh, 
to developer options. As you can see, I have them right here. There is a chance that this will not be visible here. And if that is the case for you, go back to the main settings page, scroll all the way up to about phone, and then start tapping on MIUI version. So this text right here. And as you can see, it gives me a pop-up right at the bottom. No need, you're already a developer. Uh, but for you, if you don't have your developer options enabled or visible overly, uh, nothing will be popping up uh, for about seven clicks. And from there, uh, you will get a message. Congratulations, you are now a developer. At which point, you'll be able to go out, then go to the additional settings and scroll down to developer options. Now, additionally, when you enable them, I think this will be disabled like this right at the top as you can see the switch right here so you will need to enable it and okay and from here you want to scroll down to if we find this we're looking for I think it's the me unlock status let me quickly check great yep that's it so we're looking for the me unlock uh, status and from here, um, we also need a SIM card, I guess, that has connection to mobile network because we will need to disable Wi-Fi. Uh, and I believe everybody probably has a SIM card that has mobile data nowadays, so this shouldn't be a problem. But anyway, uh, I'm gonna uh, basically pull down the notification panel and you will see uh, there is gonna be a problem with this um, because once I disable Wi-Fi, you will also lose this uh, image that I have right here, just one show anything uh, more so before i actually do that uh, what you really need to do is simply click on uh, add account to device and that's it right here and once you do that uh, that's basically all we need to do on well, the screen type here uh, now i'll also quickly tell you what you will need to do after you do this so once you uh, basically switch to mobile network disable wi-fi and click on the add account to device uh, and device um, you will then need to put the device into fastboot mode now on the website right here you'll have a uh, you'll have a guide on how to do it somewhere throughout the process let me quickly find it there we go as you can see there it is on the step 17 uh, once you click on it it will redirect you to just a fast boot mode and how to enter it and at the bottom of it you also have a video uh, so you can watch it and see exactly how to do it if you're struggling with it but the process is relatively simple to be honest you turn off the device and you hold power key and volume down at the same time when it's unplugged. So just not charging, not nothing, just unplugged, power key volume down, it will boot you into fastboot mode and from there you can connect it to your computer. So anyway, uh, going back to this, uh, I'm gonna now basically disable, like I said, Wi-Fi. So you know, generally close this, it's not gonna be needed anymore. So mobile on, Wi-Fi off. Add account and the device. Now, once it does that, it does sometimes give you the uh, the message uh, that uh, well, the message is basically we're getting that your device is now uh, protected in a way, kind of like the Google account FRP lock. So that's basically equivalent of what this is. Now, let me quickly just fix something up because I am having a problem here. couldn't verify great so I need to apparently re-log in into my account because it's I'm not exactly sure but I'm just gonna quickly do that hopefully this will fix the problem okay so I managed to log in um, with a little bit of a trouble but it finally worked I was just having a problem internet problem so that that's why I couldn't get it but now that I logged in and pressed the button uh, what I can do is turn off the device, so let's do that. Hold the power key and then select simply power off as you would normally do for turning off the device. And once it's off, you want to hold power key and volume down both keys at the same time together till you see fastboot on the screen. Now once you see it, what you can do is plug it in. Now before I do that, I will open up this software right here. So that's uh, number three. Uh, this was the fast boot uh, unlock software. So as you can see, you have the batch unlock exe. You wanna right click on it, run as admin. 
and this will look fairly simple as you can see there's not much to it and right now there's nothing visible on it but once i actually connect the device in fast boot mode just quickly get it back in there there we go and i place the phone so it actually sees it there we go so as you can see that's my device it is being recognized and right now status is locked that's the status of the bootloader so what we need to only do is select unlock can i just do its thing unlocking for a second unlocked and we're done so from here i can unplug the device and then hold power key till the fastboot mode disappears from the screen so i know we can't really see anything okay so once the fastboot disappears well, when you are holding the power key you can let go of it and the device will simply boot back up into android and that's it the process is now completely finished so that is how you would unlock your bootloader and if you found this very helpful don't forget to hit like subscribe and thanks for watching